Hey guys, how you going? Welcome back to a, another video here on my YouTube channel. Um, I've got a podcast, it's called Steve's View, or Stephen's View, uh, incorporated with Turtle Shell Fitness. It covers a lot of basic stuff from my personal life to what I'm feeling and thinking and the things that are, I, um, you know, sorry, I just had to keep an eye on these kids that were just walking in front of my car. Uh, I don't want to run them over. Uh, it would be very irresponsible of me. Um, you know, so my my uh, video today is about the current situation with the coronavirus. Now, I don't know where you're at with the coronavirus, how you feel about the coronavirus. Um, me personally, I think there's more at play. Now, you know, I get called a lot of names regularly. And that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm used to it. You know, I, I go with the punches. I am who I am and I'm not going to change who I am just for the sake of someone thinking that I'm an idiot or maybe thinking I'm um, crazy. So, um, you know, I'm a very, I'm, I'm not a massive, massive conspiracy theorist, but I'm, I'm I, you know, I, I like to, I like to make sure I'm thinking outside the box when it comes to things that are happening around in, in daily life. You know, there are, there are, there are things that have happened in my lifetime that I question about that, I, that I think, well, well, that's a little bit too sus, that's a little bit too suspect. So, suspect. All right. So. This is one of those moments where I think it's a little bit, a little bit sus. Um, you know, you know, learning that the, the virus started in late October, November, and in, and in that time, Australia was going through a massive bushfire crisis, um, massive um, at the time, and the country was banding together. We were donating millions and millions and millions of dollars towards. Uh, bushfire relief and, and helping our our communities and helping our firefighters and helping um, helping those guys um, where they needed with money and food and, and supplies and, and that sort of stuff and helping towns rebuild you know so not not only just have a couple of months gone past since that's happened and now we're in this new crisis because you know every now and again we end up getting backed up with a few crises um, you know crises. Um, so we go from one to another to another, and then sometimes it just outlays, you know. So for me personally, I think I think there's more at play than just um, an, an, an accidental virus has happened. It's been transmitted from a bat. The suspect was a bat, apparently. That's what we've been told, okay? So that's what we listen to, isn't it? We, we, that's what we get told by the media. The media tells us, oh, well, that's, that's where it came from. That's, that's what's happened. Well, you don't always have to listen to the media. The thing with the media is, and it really annoys me, is that they use words, but they don't put them into context. And then I've got to handle putting it into context for my little girl, who's six, almost seven, who asks me about the virus and what it is and, and why is it deadly and, and, and what's going on. And, and, always ask a question, that's good, uh, you know, a six year old who's asking plenty of questions is going to grow up very informed and be able to make their own decisions based on what they've asked their questions about. That, that's what I want to educate my children on, making sure that they ask the questions and they get the answers they're after and if they're not happy with those answers then they then, they then go and seek other, other answers by asking the same questions with different people, okay? That's what, that's what it's about. Right. I'm not an expert on the coronavirus. I'm not an expert on viruses or anything to do with this sort of feel. But I find it a little bit suspicious that the virus has been around since late October, early November. Um, then nothing was done and the guy who informed the Chinese government Right. informed that his government, well, dictatorship, or whatever it is, it, we all know what China is. Um, I would never want to live there. Um, so, you know, he's in, and he's been told to shut his mouth, basically. He was, he was, he was forced to sign a piece of paper to say that he made it all up. And now they've had to come out and admit that, oh, well, this may, maybe rumor, maybe this rumor has, maybe it's true. And then now look at where we're at, you know, 4,000 deaths worldwide, 
I don't know the exact number, I'm just going to ballpark at the moment because I'm driving and I don't want to race, I've done my research earlier in the week, but it's what, around 4,000, probably 4,000 more, probably more. Okay, we know that it's a virus that, that affects the respiratory system um, and it latches on to the lungs and it digs in. You know that it's transmitted through respiratory uh, droplets, meaning spit, talking, uh, breathing through the nose and the mouth. Um, we know the symptoms are flu-like symptoms, but not quite. Uh, so for 80% of us, we're probably going to get it and never know we had it. But we have a small minority of people that are in the high-risk category, which are the old and vulnerable. Those are the people that are uh, have poor immune systems or other chronic illnesses that prevent them from being able to fight off this disease, virus, um, therefore becomes a related factor in their death. Alright? They become, it becomes a related factor. It's not the factor. It becomes a related factor. So, you know, the, the point for me is that more people die from the common influenza every year. I get, I get that I get that this is new and that we're a little bit apprehensive and we don't know where to go and what to do um, and we don't know how long it's going to be around for we don't know how long it's going to take to get a vaccine or um, a cure all right well you don't know any of that and that's that's just that's going to take time till we do know that but what shits me about this the most is that it's driven fear into people to do dumb shit for dumb reasons. Now, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dad and I'm a husband and I'm in, I'm in a family of five that will soon be a family of six. Something as simple as going to the gym at 8.30 at night and then going to the supermarket at 9 o'clock is not, is not simple for me anymore. I can't just go to the supermarket and get a bottle of milk and know that there's gonna be 50 bottles in the fridge for me to grab one, you know? It, it, it doesn't work like that now because we've got people who have listened to the media and who are afraid and have gone out in fear and brought everything off the fucking shelf because they've been told they have to self-isolate for 14 days. Now, you should isolate if you have it. You should isolate if you have it. You shouldn't go anywhere near anyone else. If you think you have it, then you should stay at home, okay? And you should probably buy the things you need. You ain't gonna need four bottles of milk over 14 days ain't gonna need like we like we're having a our, we're having our fourth child and we like to prepare all right we, we like that that's our nature we like to prepare we like to make sure that when the time comes and we have our baby that we're gonna have enough stuff and we don't go and do that all in one hit we do that over a period of time we do that systematically, all right? And we do that, we do that conscientiously, thinking of other people, making sure that we don't overstock, all right? We want to make sure that we have enough, enough formula, baby wipes, all that stuff, for when we have the baby, and the baby's here, and that we don't have to go out and 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 buy every week or every fortnight the stuff we need to buy for the baby because we've already got it, we've already prepared. Okay? Because that's what we do. That's the, that's our method, and that's that's what that's that's not going to be able to happen now. You know, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to be allowed to go to the supermarket now and buy two packets of wipes or three packets of wipes uh, a fortnight until June. I can't. I'm not allowed. I've got to buy one packet. Now, is that one packet per day? Is that one packet per week? You know. Like, am I, am I going to, like, we have a family of five. We, we eat packet pasta, you know, the continental stuff. 
Am I going to be able to, I can't, we can't buy more than one packet apparently. Because dickheads have gone out and emptied a whole box into their trolleys because they think the world's ending. Because the media, the media hasn't been specific with the details. I'll reiterate that by going back to the, the earlier statement. They use specific words without being specific in detail, like the word deadly virus in capitals. So they put deadly in capitals and they put virus in lowercase. And then you have little children who can read and understand what, what death is and understand that they know that that death and deadly go together and ask questions like, why is it deadly, Dad? What's going on? How come it's deadly? And then I've got to explain to them all over, again and again and again and again. I'm at the point now in my house, I'm about to, I'm about to sell the television because I'm sick of it. I'm about to remove Facebook because I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I really am. I'm just over, I'm over watching people fight over food and videos and, and the more people the more people that fight over the food, the more videos get made. And the more videos get made, the more they get shared. The more they get shared, guess what? The more headlines get attached to them. So, I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to turn. Um, and more of those headlines get attached, the more fear. You know, the cycle just keeps on growing. It's like a cyst. Okay, it's like a cyst. It just keeps on growing and growing and growing. It's like a cancer. Fear is like a cancer that is can be stopped. Unlike cancer, we can stop fear. We can report what's real. We can report what's happening. We can report the truth. We can tell people that hey, look, this is it. This is it's 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 deadly. Okay, we get that. It's deadly. But this is what we're going to do and this is the approach we're going to take, alright? If you feel like you are unwell or sick, then you shouldn't even go in the, anywhere near anyone if you've got the flu anyway. Period. So, if you feel like you've got the flu or you're sick, you shouldn't go to work anyway. You know, it, I worked at a place once, three and a half, nearly four years ago and I worked with a fella and for three weeks I told him he shouldn't be at work. For three weeks I told him that he should be at home resting and that he should be at home doing doing what he needs to do to get better. Everybody in that place where I worked, because we worked in a confined room so and it was a chiller, so well, we're only going to uh, exacerbate that, aren't we? We're only going to increase the we're only going to increase the results of the, the of that cold or flu, aren't we? We're only going to uh, we're only going to add fuel to it, aren't we? It's going to grow, it's going to get better and stronger because we're, we're we're in and out of the cold. We're we're already sick and we're working and we're doing 12 hour days. So you're already you're already exhausted from having a cold slash flu. But then you go to work for 12 hours every day while you have that and you're probably only sleeping six hours probably five to six hours a night because you've got the flu uh, and you come to work and this is what I told him you know, and he goes no 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 and he was a full-time employee so he got paid to have sick days he got paid to have two weeks off all right if you're taking them um, so I took a week off because I started getting unwell and when I went back a week later, he was still there, still sick. So when you have the flu or the cold anyway, period, you should, you should take time out. You should relax. You should be at home in bed, making sure that you are getting better. It's no different with the coronavirus. It's no different. 80% of people that get the coronavirus are only going to really feel the, the, the small effects of it. So they're only going to feel like they've got a head cold or a chest cold uh, or a little bit of a flu, okay? 80% of people. The 20% we can help 
like staying home. We don't. It, it's just common sense. You don't. You don't need to fear people in the common sense. You don't need to fear people in the buying heaps of shit from the supermarket. And now you got families that are missing out and having to ring, having to ring. Maybe formula companies and happy companies and say, hey, hey look, we'll try to get some of your stuff. Don't no worry, that's my polyps. Okay, I've got polyps, nasal polyps, and had surgery twice to remove them. Alright? I'm just going to pull over here because I'm going to turn around. Um, and then I'll finish this video and we will rock and or roll. So, the point is, don't. Don't just buy into the media. Don't just buy into the media and what the media is telling you. Do your research. Look at everything. Everything. It's funny because some media outlets will talk to doctors that will say one thing, and then they'll talk to other doctors, and the other news outlet will talk to another doctor. So one's left and one's right, right? That's how it works. One's left, one's right, okay? So one thinks that it's it's totally deadly, we should shut the country down. And one that's left, obviously, not left hand. And the right hand side says, hang on a minute, no, we don't need to shut down the whole entire country. We just need people to have common sense and we just need people to realise that it's not going to kill everybody. It's just going to it's just going to be very dangerous for these this population, all right? For this population of people in the world, it's going to be very dangerous. We live in a very great country in Australia. We live in a, in a country where hygiene standards are pretty good. I've worked, you know, I've worked in hospitality. I've worked in in cafes, bars, restaurants. I've worked in in hotels. Our our hygiene standards here. I've worked in an abattoirs. Our hygiene standards here are great in comparison to other countries around the world. Okay. It's just common sense, okay? You go to the supermarket, you buy what you need because everybody needs to buy what they need, all right? You also come back from the supermarket and guess what? You unload the groceries and you wash your hands. You go and do some gardening, you come in, you wash your hands, you prepare dinner. You have a shower, you wash your entire body. You brush your teeth. So the, the, the point is, you don't need to be afraid of the virus unless, unless you're a person that is in the high risk category and that, that, that needs to make sure that you, those people that you do know who do get sick do stay away from you. Me personally, I have, a, I have a couple of people that are in the high risk category in my circle and I know, I don't go near them when I've got the flu. I don't know go near them when I've got a cold. I try and avoid them when I've got a runny nose because I know the implications it's going to put on them because I care about them. Because I I care. Okay? But to, to shut down a whole country to, to, to... That's what scares people. People are wanting it, but it's also scaring people. And that's... That's the big thing here. We, we don't want to be scared, okay? We want to be hopeful, okay? We want to be compassionate. We want to be caring. We want to be loving. We want to be, we want to be sharing. We want to be making sure that, okay, if, if, if Nana, if, if old mate Nana needs to go to the supermarket at 8 o'clock in the morning, that she can go to the supermarket at 8 o'clock in the morning and she can get that bottle of milk or that bottle of, or that, uh, that, bag of bread you know it, it, you want to make sure that okay i know that my neighbor has got five kids i want to make sure that when i go to the supermarket i only get what i need i'm a i'm a single person i'm not it's an example i'm a single person and i only need a one liter milk i don't need two liters of milk or three liters of milk i don't need four cartons of it i don't need 600 rolls of toilet paper for me then to re, try to resell and price gouge the crap out of everybody because i'm an asshole this people just need to show compassion Passion. I get it. I get it. I'm not. I'm not an idiot. I'm not a moron. I'm not crazy. I'm just. I just want. I'm just annoyed and frustrated that people, that the, the media. It's the. It's totally the media that is doing this to you. It is making you feel 
like the world is going to end because they put those big words on the on the screen danger and deadly and horrific and death toll it's not a death toll because it can't be a death toll because the virus itself isn't the main cause there are multiple causes that have caused these people that are over 50 to die there's more than one reason so it's it's not a death toll from coronavirus, COVID-19. COVID-19 is a related cause. A related cause. Meaning there's more than one. It's related to the issue. Alright, that's my video. Don't be scared. Please, leave enough shit on the shelves for everybody else. Just be compassionate. Let's be compassionate, okay? And common sense, man. If you, if you don't have personal hygiene, start doing it. I mean, I grew up cop on the back end if I didn't wash my hands before tea. I grew up, you know, having a bath every day. I grew up having a shower every day. I shower twice a day. I'm anal about my hygiene. I, I hate I hate smelling. And I hate I hate not feeling clean. I can't go to bed without having a shower. I, I can't sleep. I lay there and I'm like, man, I feel gross. I need to, I need to have a shower. I need to have a shower in the morning to wake me up. To, you know, it's just common sense. It's just common sense. The media just needs to slow the fuck down. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching my video. And, uh, I don't know, subscribe, like, share, whatever. And we'll probably do some more videos later.